So I had the pleasure of sitting with Sam I am Montola, a Montreal Renaissance woman. I, I know she wouldn't call herself a Renaissance woman. Um, as I've said before, mostly because she's very humble. But when you think about the fact that the idea of the Renaissance, uh, people who were expressing themselves in so many different ways and looking to pass on their knowledge, I feel like that applies perfectly to Sam I Am Montola. Having known her for a very long time, I don't want to, <laughs> I think we talk about it in the, in the, in the podcast, but we've known each other for quite some time and I've always known her to be very humble. She's a very talented person, but will like, I mean, that's, you know, that's part of it, right? This, this conversation, a lot of people that I, I want to speak with are, are humble and they they are easily some of the best at what they do but they they don't say it and they don't play it up and that's that's the part I always find funny I mean easily she could have one of the biggest egos uh, and she explains in the episode that there's a lot of people around her who express an appreciation for her as an artist, uh, as a creator, as a teacher, and and it she she doesn't let it go to her head. She's just very down to earth, and centered, and focused, and appreciative of all the people around her, and working hard at helping others reach their goals. And I think that was probably my favorite takeaway from this conversation with her just seeing her being that amazing and yeah yeah i had a lot of fun so sam i am montola uh, on this latest episode of not a journalist conversations enjoy folks enjoy so what's up everybody this is brian holiday and i'm here with Sam, I am Montola. What? what? <clears throat> so exciting. <clears throat> I have to clear my throat because I'm, I don't know. We were just talking about the fact that I'm obviously just a child of the allergy generation. <laughs> I think we all are. I, yeah. I, you know, at this point, it probably is that the world's just like, listen, there's too many of you. You're kind of annoying me. Here's some pollen. <laughs> just... <laughs> Oh, you're sneezing all the time? Yeah, that's how I feel. As if I can't get you guys out of me. It's like, oh, Mother Nature. Anyways, hmm. me and my weird ideas. It's Sam, all good. Yes. I'm very happy to sit with you. Thank you. Uh, I've, I've known you since I was 10. Yes, I was <laughs> nine. <laughs> Which is crazy. <laughs> yes. When I think of the fact that I turned 37 this year. Whew. Uh, I know. I'm like right, right back, right, right next. In, like I'm like right behind you. Basically. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Except this is one race where, where <laughs> I don't. Neither of us wants. We don't want to win. <laughs> I don't want to get old. Actually, I mean, being older it has been fun. Yes. Yeah. There's been some advantages. I mean, yeah. you're like an award-winning dancer and awesome, famous person who sings and does all that stuff. And at nine, we weren't just gonna, you know, that's not something nine-year-olds are all doing. No, I mean, I mean, I'm like thinking about like when I was nine. I mean, it was, it was, yeah, definitely dance was always, um, and music has been always uh, there with me through those times. And uh, I mean, as a kid, you just like like to do these things. You're you're you 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 watch the videos and you're like, oh, I want to be that like yeah. that artist that that. But like, and then but then it just was like really cool to just be around it too. You know, like yeah. even in school and stuff. So. Remember, this whole thing is about bragging about you. So, please. I'm like, uh, yeah, I know. I started. <laughs> I started. <laughs> I like because that's the thing. So, if you guys have listened to the first episode, you already know that the whole idea behind this was to talk with people that um, 
oh, at, f at least for the first season, is to talk with people that I know who I believe are very, uh, and not even just believe, I know are very talented and have been doing a lot of amazing things in the community for a long time um, and uh, beyond. I mean, in your case, you've been doing stuff not only in Montreal, you've been all over, um, teaching people, um, inspiring people, singing. And uh, I think one of the things that I like about, there's, there's so many people that I know who do so many amazing things, but they're all very humble. They're all very, that you know, they do their stuff, they work hard, uh, they let the work speak for themselves. Uh, but I, I also feel like there should be people singing their praises often. Um, I mean, it initially started with, uh, as you may have heard, I got to interview Spike Lee, and that's very much one of those situations where I definitely did not think I would be the first choice for that situation. Uh, mm -hmm. But someone else thought I would do a good job, and. I think I did a somewhat decent job. Uh, but I think you did. <laughs> um, but yeah, but it also just made me think of like, it would be cool to hone my skills as, uh, I guess, an interviewer, because I'm definitely not a journalist. Um, and also at the same time, get to talk to people who are uh, very talented, but are also just humble about it. So Sam, I am on Tola. Thank you for having me. A.K. Princess Shayla. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, uh, our story begins mm -hmm. in the year, I don't remember, but we were 10, so some 27 years ago. 27? Sorry. It just hit me. <laughs> it just hit me when I said that. <laughs> I was like, oh, shoot. 20, 26, 27 years ago. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. That's pretty cool, though. That's my whole lifetime. That's a legit... That's, a, yo, that's an adult. That's an adult. <laughs> We've known each other an adult's lifetime. Yes. There are 25 year olds walking around who were like born the year we met and are like working, doing their thing. Mm -hmm. That is always so crazy to me sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the crazier. Well, f first of all, mm -hmm. let's where are you? Because I, I don't want to necessarily blow up your spot. But do you mind uh, t telling the people where we are right now? Oh, um, well, we're here at um, Chalet Kent is where I work um, in the community in Cotonej um, with a great team, an amazing team. And uh, yeah, we were here at this space. It's nice and quiet so we can have a, a decent conversation. Yeah. Um, it's been here for uh, many years um, in the park, Kent Park. Now it's uh, actually turned into Martin Luther King Park. Oh, um, yes, that's true. Last year. That's yeah. true. I remember I did have a conversation with Wendell about that. And as much as I loved that they gave the name to this park, mm -hmm. I was also just like, I wouldn't have minded it being one of the ones downtown that the tours run through mm -hmm. so that they see that they see Montreal is doing some stuff. Mm, that's interesting. That was one of my comments. When I remember Wendell, uh, for those of you don't, who don't know Wendell, Jaws D on Geektastic Cypher. But I remember because he works, uh, he was, he's part of the black community, the Cotonet Black Community Center over on um, Cotonet at the at the end of the park here. Okay. And he was he was telling us like, hey, they're going to be doing the ceremony for the park and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, that's great. I just, you know, it would have been nice, you know, all these parks in the city, one, one right in the center. When all these tours come, Ho hopefully you know it's going down the list because yeah. you know they're you know like um, I forgot the name, but I know that they changed Amherst, right? So yeah. I, I'm I'm assuming that that's probably a domino effect of hopefully that's there's more point. and more yeah. things that can bring that awareness. Plus, I will say this: Kent Park. For those of you who don't know, and I didn't know until I was a little bit older, but Kent Park was one of the park where the Olympians trained in '76. Yes, which is pretty cool. Yes. I mean, that's that's like historical. 1976 Olympics, having Olympians run around this track. And there's a sort of like story that where we are in the center, that's where they were, um, I guess, training here. Oh. At this. this is this is like a, like, a, I guess, a, I wouldn't say a myth, but like a uh, urban, like legend. urban legend of like and then the Olympians used to come here and train. And this was part of the whole program in the 70s and da da da. da. But we, we were like. You know, we like to believe that, so I, it sounds I, good, yes. You say oh, urban legend, I say full-on legend. That's amazing. <laughs> I think that's so cool to, to think that Olympians have walked these same stairs as me. Uh, but yeah, the reason I brought that up is because when we talked about the fact that we've known each other for 27 years, mm -hmm. but you're here working with the youth and it, it, like, you know, how old are some of these kids? Um, we pretty much are open our doors for uh, 11 to 18 year olds. Okay, cool. Um, and we do a lot of different free programming 
um, offered to them. There's the, uh, for sure, um, all week we have the studio downstairs, NBS, that um, that Nitai, yeah. um, who's doing a great job um, showcasing and um, showing the youth how to make music yeah, and yeah. record and, and, and create songs. And then each day, basically, we have different stuff. Like we have um, boxing on, um, let's say, Monday to Wednesday and fr and Fridays and then okay. soccer and then basketball. So we're just trying to keep things like going. So then again, if any youth want to just try things, um, the purpose is for them to feel comfortable enough to come um, and be a part of a, a you know part of a family, a part of uh, something that they can look forward to after school. Yeah. Um, and yeah, usually we have fun. So. It's how how long has that pro this program been going on? Because I I don't think they had this going when I was in. Uh, honestly, I'm not quite sure. Mm. Um, I mean, I've been here for five years. Oh, dope. Um, but this has been way before I started. Okay, so I okay. would, I mean, if I was to guess, at least 15 years, if not oh, more. Oh wow. Um, at least by yeah, 2000, I would say. So at least then. So I imagine oh, wow, that's already 20. 20. So yeah. it's been going on even for myself, as you said. Like I mean, I've been here, you know, Colton Edge for a long time myself, and um. You know, it wasn't really where I was more aware of like the Black Community Center. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been going on for a while. So that's. Yeah. I mean, you know, as I said, I'm 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 not sure how many people knew you were doing that stuff, but hopefully now everyone recognizes because projects like that and and community centers and giving kids uh, something to do after school is hell important. Because I know when I was a kid, I didn't have anything to do, and I just kind of ran amok. <laughs> back well i mean back when i was going to to bedford in in uptown at like what i was uh, uh, 89 mm -hmm. in 89 i'm like six so like early 90s too so six seven so until like 93 after school you just kind of walked home but then you're just running around riding your bike you know no one and then sometimes you're just seeing things and experiencing <laughs> situations you're in like coat uh, that you're just like i don't know if i'm supposed to be hanging around these parts right now <laughs> i'm gonna ride my bike back that other way <laughs> so had there been a space like this for me to come to and feel comfortable and also all these cool things because i'm looking around the room and i see a whole bunch of different things that kids can you know dip their hands in and just get the experience and, and learn and stuff and even I would have loved to have learned boxing. Yeah, not for even because sure. I'm a fighter, just because that seems cool. I mean, and it's something too that we've been, um, you know, not. Um, I mean, us, but of course, uh, we have a wonderful, you know, teacher. You have um, Kofi and uh, even Kareem that comes um, different days, so that do like more mi mar mixed martial arts, and oh. then you have boxing. So, and the idea too, like um, they have great um, views of how they take it and try to have conversations with the youth. So it's like really about just more self awareness and. Um, and again, like, of course, it's, it's great to know how to defend yourself in any situation, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and we like to encourage women to to do it, um, not, you know, not to force anything, but to, yeah. to just make sure that, again, boxing doesn't always have to be a man's sport as well. Yeah. Um, but also it's it's just a great way of understanding um, how to use. I guess how to control your emotions, how to control aggression or just even, I mean, aside from the physical activity, I think it's just a good way to just be active. And yeah. um, I mean, there's many different ways, so it's not the only way, but um, it's there. It's there. It's free. You know, 11 to 18, like if anybody, you know, again, um, have children you, or youth whatever it's pretty much open to them so do you have to be part of the the code and ndg community like if you have to um, not necessarily okay, okay. you know like of course we're here to service um the youth here yeah. you know and but i mean we we never close our doors to kids who are coming from laval or you know south shore or whatever it's really um we're here to to be at service yeah let them all in I mean? right so yeah. it's it and for them to build, you know, in the end of the day, it's nice because we get to see how the youth sometimes build, you know, friendships and relationships with kids yeah. that maybe they would never have crossed paths with with and stuff. So yeah. it's it's just like a nice way of, um, you know, getting people to know each other, you know, aside from all the things that is happening. It's um, I think it's always um, feels good to see when there's actual connections being built. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Before the uh, the. What would I say? The jadedness of adulthood kicks in. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
<laughs> not to not to hate on being an adult, but like I, I definitely understand a lot more what my mom was trying to tell me when I was a kid about like just getting to know people and and like it's because once certain ages come in and and it's hard to separate some of the things you've seen mm-hmm. in your life and to not hold on to those essentially kids don't have the baggage it's true like so meeting someone new and interesting is just meeting someone new and interesting exactly and and i know like that at that age too like everything you know seems i guess absolutely magnified and yeah. and um you know, at that age, you know, you, you never think of doing things by your on your own. You know, you always yeah. have your crew. Um, so it's it's um, I know just as you said, like meeting someone who is outside of your circle was like a big deal. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. not that you didn't like the person. It's just something that you're so shy. You're so self-conscious. Um, you know, you're thinking all the worst things. Yeah. And did um, I shower enough today? Hmm? That, that, like me when I was a kid, yeah. I was just like, did I shower? Okay. <laughs> Is this kid going to think I, this my first impression of this, this kid's first impression is you smell. Is that what, <laughs> that was often <clears throat> young Brian was a little concerned about that. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, it's cool. Like, I mean, that's it, man. Like, um, you know, those are the things I think we try to, um, instill, to, to instill yeah, and, yeah. and, and, you know, always it's all, and it's a good learning curve for us too. you know, as being adults, as you said, like, and we try to warn them too. like, you know, as being an adult, this is, you know, cause it's hard to, once you become a kid into adulthood, there's some sort of like weird transition oh, yeah. where you don't know where you stand and people ch- see you differently and, oh, yeah. and, um, just being outside as well. But I think, um, you know, we try our best to, to at least, uh, hopefully, Get them to be yeah, pre- a little prepared, prepared. Yeah, you know. So, and do these kids know about your skills? The whack? Do you do classes here with them for the yeah, dance? Yeah, so I'll and be stuff? starting to do um, more um, like dance class, like um, um, Tuesdays. So okay. like Tuesday from like uh, six thirty to eight o'clock. I'm planning to do a, a, a dance um, class slash discussion as well. So like oh, to cool. um, introduce like. Um, videos, uh, music videos, documentaries, just to get also um, them to see um, various uh, examples of dance and culture and dance in hip hop, for example, or even whacking. Like, I'm, I'm not necessarily, um, I guess for this class, I'm like, I'm putting it hip hop, but I mean, yeah. I'm very open because, of course, I do whacking as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've been on this kind of view of trying to connect those dots too. So, um, because I think, for example, um, in my experience, um, especially when it comes to dance as well with hip hop, it's it can be very abstract or very um, there's there's just too many examples. Yeah, <laughs> for example, yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> too many examples. For example, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, and so. To, to my best, I guess, knowledge of trying to showcase how I was taught, you know, and it's not the same era as well. So um, I like to at least share kind of where um, the views and the things and the people that inspired me. And yeah. hopefully they could see like that kind of um, inspiration, too, as well. Um, but again, not like against anything that's happening now. I think there is some great examples um, still, you know even though it's a, it's a lot going on, yeah. um, there is still some good examples um, of great dancing and, and how hip hop dance in general is, is evolving as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's uh, something I'm planning to do on Tuesdays. Um, anybody's welcome. Um, I like the idea of two women, you know, getting that sort of knowledge so that they have a sense of confidence yeah, yeah, yeah. and they can feel good to, um, you know, at that age as well, not to be shy. If they have something that they want to share and, and show and, and, and to be okay and, and to, feel comfortable with that, you know? And I feel like prob- probably also help counter some of the uh, images that the media gives on, like, what... Like, this is what a dancer looks like. Yeah. Like, the, for this very specific image here is what you should be aiming for. And it's just like, yeah, that's not necessarily what you should... Like, not everyone's going to look like that. Yeah. But we still have, <clears throat> like, I mean, like, ballet, for example, there's still, like, this, the statuesque, like... Yeah, it's very particular. Yeah. It's very yeah, particular. Yeah. And I feel like, uh, I, I, like, when I'm, uh, I mean, I'm a guy, so I, 
sure you might have a poster of like D- Dwayne the Rock Johnson and it'd be like that'd be fun but it's also just like you know you then have a whole group of people saying dad bods are hot and it's just like sweet I don't have to put in the effort <laughs> this week you know so whereas like <laughs> for women it's not that it's not pitched that way often more so now though but, yeah, yeah of course um I think yeah I think because we just have this um this um, idea already, you know, subconsciously that um, men don't necessarily have to be attractive to be powerful and mm. um, well, and in control and, 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 and successful. Yeah. Um, so I think there, as you said, like if you got already something going on and you're not necessarily looking like The Rock, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. it's not a big ass, you know, sorry, big ass deal. Oh, you can swear. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, just kind of I mean, there very want, naturally. Yeah, yeah. If you want the kids to listen to this, we can keep it cleaner, but by all means, feel that. Uh, yeah, no, but it's, it's, so it's, it's, um, I think that's just, we don't think about it. We don't, we don't question it. True. Um, and with, um, I think it, me, with, um, me included, like when I was growing up, I mean, yeah, it's anything that was, it was, everything was so magnified. So anything yeah. that we looked at um, and didn't necessarily, I didn't fit that mold was like a big deal. You yeah. know, it was like, even to the point where I wanted braces because I wanted to close my, my gap, yeah. you know, and it's now, of course, I love it. I appreciate it. And we've it's, le- I've learned more about it. Like, that's like, like, African descent they like I've like been reading stuff I'm like oh like <laughs> this is something in p- part of the culture like you know mm. but we're all being taught like no you need your teeth to be these perfect chiclets and and it's, it's but it's weird it's like and you know it's not something that was again taught at home where my mom was like oh your teeth whatever like I mean she has it too and yeah. it now I obviously have it's a sense of pride it's yeah. I know it's it's a definitely a trademark but um back then it was just like you know I think um, it's a normal process, sadly. Like um, I think it, every woman goes through it in mm. their own way, um, and you know, hopefully, we can change that. Um, but I'm happy that at least the people around me weren't self-conscious in that way and told me that I was worthy and told me I was beautiful and yeah. told me these things, so that it helped. I guess had me wake up later on. That was like, oh yeah, maybe I was a little bit too hard on myself, yeah, or yeah. maybe. <laughs> You know, um, obviously this is not realistic. Yeah. And, um, but I think sadly, um, there's that little phase that, you know, we go through. But I think one of the things that I'm hearing from this and I, I th- which I think is super cool is that you're getting to pass on that, that like, this is a phase that people go through, but you're looking to try and help diminish maybe some of the blowback that they feel emotionally mm-hmm. from it because you know you've gone through it and you're just like oh I was really hard on myself and you're like oh yeah these kids are probably really hard on themselves and I can always like you can help guide them which I mean and that's that's the fun part about like I, you know 27 years that we've been, we're older but I guess this is the advantage when we're older we get to look back at that stuff and to think about how we can help the next generation you know, maybe get a head start, right? Like mm-hmm. instead of being held back by some of those ideas, get that head start and then just like take off and do mm-hmm. and wilder, more amazing things than we do. Yeah, I mean, definitely, because I, I, I do definitely believe that it takes a village to raise a child, oh, yeah. you know? I mean, yeah. I we've, we've heard that um, saying since uh, I was a child. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and and I've, I've had that, um, you know, through the summer camps, through... Um, my parents and you know the people around my parents knew who I was so it it, it definitely um I never felt like I was alone isolated in yeah. a in a situation um I had great I mean aside from again my mother who's an amazing person um and was very strong and very um you know she raised me yeah. um I remember your mom def- the first time I met her <laughs> Exactly. I think everyone who meets my mom knows my mom and, you know, she's definitely memorable. Um, But again, you know, I had really great also women, you know, who were older, who were able to also tell me these things. Mm. So I think um, even if it didn't register right away, I think now like, oh, wow, like, yeah, this was definitely a big part um, of my life. So, and that, and you know, I know not everyone has that. Yeah. And, um, I think I definitely contribute this to my success, of uh, of my confidence. Um, why, um, sometimes I'm not saying I'm always confident. I'm always sure of what I'm doing and, but I, maybe I don't show it, but yeah. you know, I think it's, it's, it definitely, these people, 
my mother, um, strong women, like my godmother, all these people, they, they help me be like, you know, I'm, I'm meant to do something. I'm yeah. here for a reason. And, you know, we love you. And, and, you know, as a woman, like, you know, this is, this is how, you know, you're worth this much, you know? And I think it definitely, um, I, I, there's no doubt about it that, um, where I am today is because, um, they didn't rear me that way. Yeah. And, um, so when I see younger women, I think it's just, I, I mean, I, you know, you try our best. It's not to say like, you know, um, but we, I, I do believe like it's, it's good to share that with others because maybe they don't always have that. And mm. it's those little things that, you know, maybe hopefully gets them to remember when they're doing something, um, great or progressive and everything that they can be like, you know what? Yeah. Like I know that I'm in a good place. Like these people did this, therefore I can do that, you know? Mm. Um, but yeah, that's how I, I feel. It's like, it's the people around you, um, that definitely helps, I think, build your character and builds your, um, the foundation. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that was beautiful to listen to. <laughs> No, it was. I mean, that that's like, I, I mean, if ever there's a takeaway from this, I, we haven't even touched on the musical stuff and the, the touring and all the other amazing things you do. But hell, if this was just that, the, the interview that uh, right there, I feel like that's one hell of a beautiful message. Aww, it really yes. is. It just like, you know, it, like, I, I think I, I'm not even going to try and add to it. I'm going to, no, thank you. That was, yeah, I hope people already hear that part and, you know, we all went through a lot, so yeah, definite. But you know, with that confidence, you've turned uh, you, you turned the corner, and then and then the singing and the the dancing and all that stuff. Uh, you know, what was that like? What was that? You know, because I you know we've known each other a long time. You've you've always been working on music, and mm -hmm. and uh, I mean I didn't know as much of the dancing because I I was doing more of the radio thing, and mm -hmm. we talked about it. But I mean, uh, I think one of my favorite things is whenever I'm having conversations with people and they're talking about dancing and then let's say someone brings up whacking i always pull out my phone and i'm just like let me show you an example and they're just like oh and they're like oh she's good who's that and i'm just like that's sam i am i grew up with her I, <laughs> I i i brag all the time about how amazing you are because i had these these videos online and you doing contests there's one i showed a group of friends where you're like in a suit doing like it's, it's it looks like a team dance oh yeah 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 it's and then, too. yeah and, it, and then you're like you guys are like hey, you guys are killing it all four of you are like it's like a competition but it's also like a, a, like you just start and then you guys synchronize over here and they're doing something and i was like this is so cool to watch like so what like you know how like from when we were you know in high school and stuff like that and then where did that start from you know because you talk about how you're inspiring young mm -hmm. what inspired you at that moment to do this stuff um, well, I, I mean, I always loved music, um, and dance, mm. um, dance came first as my mom would say, she put me in dance class cause I was very clumsy, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, so I guess, um, I mean, it was both hand in hand, but mm. I mean, I guess my first ever class, um, was jazz ballet, okay. um, with Don and Philip. So anybody who knows Don and Philip is really, um, was a great uh, duo of teachers um, that, you know, from at least the 70s been killing it and, oh, yeah. and okay. still, um, at least Don um, right now is still, he's still here with us and doing great things as well. Um, but um, yeah, it started with that. And, you know, I love dance. Um, I mean, in that era, the 80s, um, the, uh, well, I was in 84, so, around the, I guess the later 80s, you yeah. know, a lot of the music videos too had a lot of dancing. Yeah. Um, a lot of the singers were dancers as well. Yes, yes. Um, One in particular whom, you know, it's, it's interesting full circle, I used to love was Jodie Watley. Okay. Um, um, aside from Prince and Michael Jackson, um, but uh, yeah, and um, interestingly enough, she was actually um, a whacker in the 70s with oh. my mentor in Soul Train. Oh, um, cool. Obviously, I never knew that <laughs> at that age or whatever, but yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. interesting when you grow up and then you're like, wow, this was something that was kind of always like in front of me but yeah. then now i'm like, it's like oh connected. it's connected in some ways so yeah like that inspired me like the idea of like the 80s um had definitely like a wild um 
you know, with the with the visuals and the music videos was definitely a big thing at that time. And fashion mm, yeah. um, was a big thing, like a bit of a glamour, um, like, you know, Sade and like how, oh, yeah. you know, so it's like a lot of like those nice, interesting inspirations that, um, you know, as a child watching. And of course, that's when hip hop really was blowing up. And my brothers who were a bit older um, used to watch Big Daddy Kane yeah. and, and uh, Rakim and was like, I was introduced to those things. And um, even with uh, the first song with Crystal Waters um, and just being like really loving dance. And interestingly enough, these dancers that was in Crystal Waters video, um, La Da Di La Da Da, was, yeah. um, you know, I know them like they're pioneers in hip hop and, and house, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's amazing to, you know, as a kid, be kind of inspired by all these things. And then I guess in some way it comes full circle yeah. where I'm like, wow, like it's crazy. Right. Um, but yeah, I started with jazz and jazz ballet and then, you know, met my hip hop mentor, which is Angelo. Amir, which, uh, I mean, if you know the dance here in Montreal would know who he is. He's been doing it for long time yeah. <laughs> and still teaching so that's great and um you know and then started with that like and that was kind of like you know at that time was called like it was like freestyle dance you know so yeah. it was like hip-hop but um not i guess the hip-hop we see see today you know it was like with new jack swing and yeah. it had a lot of different influences um that was considered basically like um you know urban street dances okay. and things like that so um but yeah, just started with that, loved it, you know, as a kid, was doing competitions already with other kids. Um, you know, I loved performing. Um, and then from there, in, from elementary onwards, I was into choirs, so I was singing oh, yeah. in choir. Yeah. Um, and I was still shy. I think dancing for me at first was a little bit more, um, it was more comfortable in a sense that um, there's a certain, com uh, certain, t um, like a separation? A little bit, you know, because dancing, it's like you, you just you just dance and, you know, whatever feelings you may have, whatever, it's just like you put it into the movements. And, yeah. and, and um, you're, but with me singing, it's, our music was interesting. Um, even though it comes from the same place, for me was, um, I liked choirs, but it, it took me a while to actually um, do the solo thing or okay. to feel like, oh, yeah, I can sing solo. And because I was always very self-conscious about myself, yeah. I'm, I didn't um, feel I had like, you know, I wasn't comfortable with my voice. Um, I, you know, so it was a lot of like training or just also like, you know, mentally. It's interesting. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, I mean, with the dance, you're I mean, both of them are expressions. Mm -hmm. Uh, and with the dance, I feel like, is it because I guess when you're in the dance, you're focused on just like being in the moment of what you're doing and whether someone's watching or not, you're just, you're just doing it. Yeah. Maybe that's kind of, that's a I good wonder, example. I yeah. mean, I think that could be it. Um, and, but it's interesting. It, I mean, both, as I said, I had to get that confidence. Yeah, yeah. Um, and really when I was in Wager, actually the, the high school, Wager. um, Wager shout out um it was when i was like there was just they were playing some i don't remember the song but it was like some dancehall reggae and then i was like no one has ever saw me dance <laughs> ever yeah and i was you know i was a little nerdy and I, I'll, I'll take that i'll take that I'm, i was a very I'm a nerd. proud nerd over here so <laughs> by all means <laughs> so like everybody just saw i was really quiet and do nothing you know um even though i was dancing in the studios like yeah. whatever else but no one knew what i was doing outside of school so when i came in and just kind of did a little, you know, log on and whatever. And yeah. it was just like, what the hell? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. She could dance? Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> and kill it. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was just, and then they were just like, and then from there, when I, I got that, I guess that validation, you know, you know, you're a young kid, 13, 14 years old, you know, that's where I was like, oh, I can see myself dancing for a very long time. Yeah. And that was really from that point of like, okay, I'm just going to jump in. That's and cool. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, gonna be, yeah. and, and, and then from there, that's when I got comfortable and confident to, like, do the talent shows and do um, the fashion shows. And, of course, with my friends, you know. And um, But, yeah, it's, like, these little, like, marking moments of they were always there, but then it was always, like, that pushing yeah. myself to this, like, I guess the deep end and kind of seeing, like, where it can go that's so cool though like i like that you have those like you can remember those iconic moments where you're just like oh yeah that's that was an instance where something pushed me and i jumped yeah. in yeah because it was i mean just any art i think 
um it's 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 a journey right yeah. and um especially when you're young and and you know your parents put you in these things because they know that you can do yeah. great in them yeah. or you know they think you'll learn certain skills and but there's a point in time too when you get older that it's either you really continue it or you kind of i guess leave it alone mm. um and so I think like these little moments kind of give, gave me the extra push to be like, you know, I actually can actually do something in this, yeah. um, you know, and then it gave me the, I guess the passion. I mean, I always had the passion, but really to perform and really be like, I can actually do this. Um, it's, it, it's, it's kind of a good feeling to know that, you know, that you feel like you're good at something. Yeah. Hey everyone. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying this Not A Journalist. I just want to remind you guys, if you're listening to this right now, you still have a chance to buy your tickets to our event on February 1st at Local Legend, 3910 Boulevard St. Laurent in Montreal, Quebec. Tickets are $10, game night, all organized and prepared by Running With Wolves and the Franken Armstrong Collective. We definitely want you guys to come out, so please, 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 if you're interested, buy your tickets now. The tickets are selling fast. I have to say, the last time I checked, uh, the event was selling pretty quickly, so if people are, are interested, please buy your tickets in advance because we will likely run out. So, yeah. <laughs> it's fun. I like I like knowing that people like coming to our events. We'll have future events announced uh, real soon, but uh, keep checking out everything on franklinarmstrong.com. Thank you. You mentioned competitions before, and I just want to ask very quickly. Nowadays, the idea of competitions, I mean, we're, we're kind of less... We, we like to do a lot of, like, participation awards now, mm -hmm. uh, and not necessarily always like the competition aspect is just like, okay, you competed. It doesn't matter if you win. It's more important that you jumped in. Yeah. Do you feel that if that approach had been done back when you were younger, you would feel the same way? Because I always wonder, like when we were growing up, that wasn't the approach. Like you were, you were like second, <laughs> second place was first loser. That's what I was yeah. literally told once. Like, the, you know, like Yo. we were told participating is great. You were told like, you're here to win. So, you know. Um, it's interesting because um, I you, think both, it's like, uh, I yeah. think they're both is valid mm -hmm. depending on where you use it. Okay. Um, I, I definitely, I think we were hard on ourselves. I think yeah. our friends were hard on ourselves <laughs> and each other. Um, and definitely like when I think of our school, I'm like, uh, you know, we survived. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like there was no like, Oh, you participate. Great job. High no, five. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. was like, you suck. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like what was that? Wager, no. Wager was like the Apollo sometimes <laughs> when you, when I hear stories yeah. about how people would be at the Apollo and, tr and like going on stage, I'm just like, yeah, man, that's Wager. And you went on stage. If you, if you didn't do well, yeah, you would hear about it. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I mean, it's obviously you might feel like garbage, you know, yeah. but I think, I think still though it, it really depends on if you really want something mm. it's 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 um you know you could cry you know all those things are important to do like when to you feel, know yeah. to feel to get all that thing out but <laughs> yeah. in the end of the day if you really want to do something um you know I think it's always about going back drawing board and really figuring out what it is that you know you can be better you know or yeah. or like what went wrong or whatever and again it's more to do with like constructive criticism obviously yeah, if like yeah. people are just slamming you like <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know but it's it's i think those are the those are the things that get people to be great mm. you know in some mm -hmm. ways and again it depends on the, the purpose like of course like the there's certain things that the purpose isn't about the winner yeah you know what i mean it's really about the participation because already the confidence it takes especially with i think um I wouldn't say like youth. I think everyone, but I think yeah. there's, it, it depends. It really, really depends. But for me, um, because we we were, I guess, used to that comp yeah. sort of competition yeah. sort of thing, and I think it also depends on. I was. I'm also very comp. Uh, I guess competitive with myself. Like okay. I want to do well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You so, set those goals for yourself. So then it's like it's yeah. It's kind of reinforcing like oh yeah, I gotta get my shit together. Yeah. So yeah, blah, 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 you know where. 
again, it's what's the purpose? It's like, what do you, what's the purpose? Is if it's just to do it and you want to have fun oh. with it, then why not? But if it's a question of you want to be at a certain level, yeah. for sure, these certain milestones, I think, is important in some way, you know. But in the end of the day, competition is 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 like again. I don't think it's like a lifetime journey of having yeah. to do all these things. I think it's a good way to kind of um, get you to uh, um, to own your skills. Yeah. And okay. then after, and then and then and then you will decide whether you need to go through that process again. You know yeah. what I mean? And. But I like that idea of you know you realizing whether or not this is something you want to pursue for fun or something you want to pursue because you you want to challenge yourself to possibly be the best at it mm -hmm. and sometimes it can be both yeah but the participation aspect can be okay that, that's that's good that's that's yeah i like that because i never i never thought of it that way i you know mm -hmm. very much for just remember being <laughs> when i was a kid <clears throat> second place is first loser and then <laughs> i see all these other kids nowadays being like I, I came in fifth, but I did it. And I'm just like, you little... B no. <laughs> I'm not hating on them. I just... They have it easier. And I'm jealous. I'm jealous that they have it easier sometimes. But it's good. No, I see. That's that's a really valid... The whole idea of like... like I guess you have to realize for yourself, why are you doing it? Yeah, that is definitely yeah. important. Yeah. And I mean, and that also leads into like what you're doing now with the, the dancing. and Like when you say why, for you, it's because it, like you were saying, it's the expression and you know, a, the, a magnitude of other reasons, I'm sure. Like, mm -hmm. like you know, after you, you were comfortable in choir and you started doing those solos, what, you know, it, it's one thing to do the solo and feel good about yourself, but what inspired you to start writing and producing and stuff? Um, the writing, I mean, it still took me a couple of years to feel comfortable with my own voice. Mm. Um, and I think it's not something that will go away Till I die. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> I right. think I think I've, I've learned to um, to kind of put that aside. Yeah. And and just be like, you know, this is where I'm at, and this is what I want to do, and this is how I feel. Then being like, I gotta be at uh, have this um, unrealistic expectation, yeah. or um, just um, looking outside of things. Um, but um, for the writing, I mean, I always did. Um, poetry on my okay. own. Yeah. Um, I just uh, never showed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. And it was more like freehand. It wasn't to say like I was doing so many like rhyming schemes or things like that. It was yeah. just really just a, a way, another way of expression. But this was also very shy. I didn't show a lot of people. And um, when it came after seeing that music was important, very important to me, and I and I had the um, I guess the experience of going through a choir, um, mm. singing gospel, and um, after maybe my 22 years, I was 22, uh -huh. where I was like, you know, like I would like to try to see how I can put my words into melody. I've never yeah. done it. I've never, because writing and just writing is is still different from putting it in melody and oh, hearing yeah. how the flow is yeah, and, yeah. and how that would make sense all together. So it's not only just about rhyming and it's not only just about, okay, yeah, the melody, but is the words making sense? Yeah. Is there an actual story cohesive yeah, going yeah, on? Yeah. Um, and so it took me a while. Um, it took me a couple of years in a sense that I tried um, a few singles here um, that was released with The Bridge, actually, um, which was uh, interesting, uh, which which was a mainly a duo of Kareem and Jonathan. Um, if I mean some, I don't think they're doing it anything right now. But this mm -hmm. was like a long time ago, and you know they. It was good to just do that experience where I first time doing something by myself and just seeing where it, where it led. Yeah. You know, and because I had all this weird, not weird, but you know doing choir for a number of years and that was also a great experience and traveling with that and 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 also with um the gospel choir uh, co uh the gospel trio that I was a part of yeah um which was called revelation three and and seeing the business side of things and just never really having i guess my own like what was it that i liked and yeah, what is it yeah. that i was good at or you know how did i see the world or how did i see myself expressing myself it was always also singing other songs right which i liked wasn't yeah. to say i was against it's just it. that it was through the lens of something else exactly yeah. and was just kind of like well what can i what what 
what can I actually do? And, and you know, going through the process of just even taking classes at the, um, the School of um, Music in McGill, just like okay. learning a bit of like theory and solfege yeah. and things like that. Um, because at that time, there wasn't really much, well, in my view anyways, diff- various ev- avenues of how you would make it in music yeah. in a sense, you know, like especially with academia. So it was like either you went to a music program, which was, I guess, um, you know, McGill or Concordia. Yeah. This was before place. the big internet blow up, right? Like Yeah, mainly. Yeah. Where it's just starting. Um, yeah, so true. basically, you know, you you know, to be big you have to be um signed and, yeah. and all these things, which still I guess is valid, but it was really like, okay, aside from that, like where <laughs> where yeah, would where I do, be going? Yeah, where do you fit in? You right know, there, where yeah. would I fit in? And so that kind of you know, when that didn't work out, let's say with the gospel and that didn't work out where okay, I did all the the schooling and things like that. But then it was just like, okay, after this, what do I do? You know, and it really came down to when I was really trying to get into the music program, actually in McGill, <laughs> and it didn't happen. I was like, very, dumb. I was really sad. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, okay, well, can I? I do I wait another year till I apply again? Yeah. You know, and what do I do for this year? You know what I mean? Like, because yeah, I was really like. Fair doing all this thinking that was the plan that was the plan of like i'm gonna do this and school at that you know school is important but like at that time that was the only thing i knew that was about advancing Mm -hmm, so it was mm -hmm. like okay well if i can't do this and i'll go to school for it but when that didn't happen i was like oh my god yeah like i did all this work and and i didn't it didn't go the way i wanted to so what do I do now? And yeah. then it re- that was the, the the defining moment of like, well, I've been writing on my own. Still, again, it, I wasn't as at ease with it as I was now, but mm-hmm. was like, you know, well, maybe I'll just do my own thing and see where it goes. Like literally, that was the conversation that I had in my head because oh, okay. I was like, I did all this stuff, and yeah, I'm yeah. like, okay, so I just go back to regular life. Of yeah, like, yeah, yeah. all right, it didn't work out perfect, uh, you know. Um, that's it. So give it that college try, you know. You know, and and so that's kind of was like, well, I don't want to waste a year. If yeah. if it happens that I do it again, cool, or maybe in the future. But it was like, okay, maybe this is something that I should try. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's really kind of, it came down to that. But there's a lot of factors. I mean, there's, I mean, the the climate has changed so much. Oh my god. Um, because I was like, if I was to really put out a, a year, a, a time frame. Oh my god, it was like. Maybe around 2005. Okay. You know? Okay, yeah. 2007. Like, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, like it's Facebook's a big difference. not even. Like, all social media as we know it now wasn't even the same. Exactly. Yeah, so like, it's like that That moment is like, whoa, you know what I mean? It's it's kind of. It feels wild. like a light, wor- a light years away. <laughs> it's legit, though. <laughs> Yo, like, when we talk about social media and, and you know, and I, I, I mean, that's one of the things I wanted to ask next. Like, you know, that transition of seeing the industry change, because you mentioned like, yeah, back then it was like, you get signed, you get a deal, you have a and they work your album to radio, all that stuff. And now, you, you know, sometimes you don't even need to work an album to radio. Radio is begging you to send it because you already have a million streams on a streaming site somewhere. Mm-hmm. So it's just like with that, that transition, do you think it's been better for the music industry? Like, what's your thought on, and also and not even just music, but on expression in general, because like, the, uh, you know, I, like I was saying, I can show friends videos of you on YouTube doing whacking from X competition X years ago, mm-hmm. and that's retained in history now. Whereas when it first started, you were talking about people in the 70s and stuff, hope, dream upon dream, someone filmed it, but some of those moments are, you know, as wonderful as they were, never to be witnessed again. Mm-hmm. So what's that like when you think of it as an artist now uh, compared to that back then? <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's both have its magic, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, both have its magic. I'm, I mean, I'm definitely for it, like how the change has, because if I, if I didn't, if it didn't change, I would think I wouldn't be here actually, you know, talking with you or having people, um, you know, 
check me on IG or check me on yeah. YouTube or whatever and be like, yo, I like what you do. Like, da, 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 da. like we would like to hire you or we like to um, get you to teach here or, oh, or sing here or whatever. Like, I mean, that's that's so that's, cool. that's, that's yeah. the, I mean, that's the great thing about um, being able to self-promote yourself. Mm -hmm. um, it does help, obviously, when you have a team, let's yeah. be honest. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Because it is a big responsibility, not only as an artist. As, as an artist, my first priority should be my art, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so it is sometimes nice to have a team um, that can deal with the other things that would be more considered business or considered, you know, in that way. Yeah. Um, because it is it is a lot of work. It's a lot of effort. It's a lot of... Um, it's pretty much 24 seven. Yeah. But I think that's the, the, the great thing about it is that you're able to self show your show who you are. Yeah. Hopefully that, that is quality. Um, you know, am I agreeing? Everything that's coming out is, uh, you know, quality. Yeah, yeah. Like I think we could say no, but it's, it's, I think it still is a good way to get the message out. If you're strategic enough, if you're able to, know how to play it yeah you know i think that's uh, i think that's a great thing um as as you said you can archive it so even again um you have all this information um to your advantage yeah um i never even thought about the the fact that yeah someone ex discovers your stuff and i guess yeah that makes sense you get gigs and stuff like someone's on your social media and sees you doing this and it's just like oh she'd be great to teach a class like that's that or, that's wonderful like i never i didn't even think about that yeah or i mean or just when people are like hey like i, I need i need a whacking teacher i've heard about you da, 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 oh, da, wow. da, 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 da. like of course like the first thing would be like here's my demo or here's my yeah. these are the things i've done you know and here it's all in this list of yeah. like videos you can check them out or and it's and i think that's that's great you know because it's just easy access it's accessible um but I do like the magic too of, I think that the, when we grew up with, as you said, like finding the time um, to get the information or the music videos will come at a certain time yeah, of the yeah, day yeah. and, or once a week. And then you just had to get yeah. that, you know, cause you were just like, if I miss home. it, like I'm never gonna, I'm not going to see it for another week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there was that magic that there was that angst, that passion yeah. to, to want to learn these things because you knew that it was just like this window. Yeah. And I think that also breeds another animal, you know, in a yeah, sense yeah. that, you know, um, uh, that that's definitely molded me and how I saw hip hop and, yeah. and R and B because that was the only way we were able to get it. And so, but when I speak to let's say my students or things like that, like they are kind of like, they don't understand that, you know, yeah. like when I tell them, they're like, Whoa, that's crazy because it's like, you could just pull up your phone and there you go. But I also think because there's just too much information that they just don't know where to start, you know, and that's True. the thing. So when we had, we knew the information because the information was coming at this time, at this place, and we go for it. And, and that was how we felt related yeah. to what it is that we we're seeing. Whereas now I think just everything is just on the table, but then it's like, what do you, where do you start? Yeah. Like, you, you it, was, it was, you're right. It was curated for us. Yeah. You know, you had master T and he was interviewing this artist and you were just like, Oh cool. Someone's, someone's big enough for master T to pay attention to them. And you're like, that's dope. Yeah. And now it's just like, Oh, here are these 30 channels that we have online. And these people are interviewing this person, this person, this person, this person, this person. And the kids are just like, I guess I'll watch these. I, what? Where? Yeah. 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 I would find, I, I am, I feel like, I, I mean, I'm not a kid, so I can't say it, but uh, I, I, I always wonder like, how do they not feel overwhelmed all the time with all the content and how do you choose your favorite? How do you find a favorite? Like, how do you, there's so many, like, you're going through, like, when we were kids, I, I mean, I guess it would have been cool to have the options, but at mm -hmm. the same time, it was kind of nice to have some of the stuff curated for us, because you got to just discover it through those, like you were saying, those venues, but now it's like, there's a lot of, like, searching for diamonds in the rough, and it's a lot of rough, <laughs> there's a lot to go through, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I guess, I've, I've grown to, like, be able to it's it's evolution i guess it's evolution like i don't mm. want to just put it on that i think you know times change all the time yeah my mother's time is was not our time yeah and yeah. our time is not their time yeah. you know and yeah. it's just um 
I think this is why it's important just to have the conversation between generations, even if they do agree or don't agree. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is why still the conversation needs to be held because I think it always will be needed at the right moment. Yeah. You know, and um, and I think that's maybe could always be an not an issue, but you know, we can't change that things are changing. Like yeah, it, we yeah, have, yeah. we're flexible. Um, we've adapted. We, we, we take what's, what's positive and we go for it. Yeah. Um, and if anything, we should be happy that there's evolution. Yeah. yeah and I, I think it's just like, again, it's, it's just important and not just me or the cent, like the center I work at, but just everyone in general, like if is able to at least talk and have those conversations with other younger generations, whether or not they agree, whether or not they're like, oh, this is cool, like whatever. I think it still needs to be done so that they understand, you know, because the, f the thing is like they don't, yeah. you know, and we're assuming that they, they do. They might act like they do, but yeah. the, mo the most of the time when I speak, it's like they've never heard of this person or they've never heard of like that, how it used to be. Yeah. And it's amazing for them because they're like, wow, like, that happened, you yeah. know, or, or like, wow, you, that used, that used to be the thing for everyone. And it's like, yeah. And, and then they see how still functional we are. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, how did I, you even live like that? <laughs> what do you but, mean? It wasn't at your fingertips every two seconds, but you know, yeah. but, then, but then they appreciate it, uh, you know, more too, where they're like, oh, I feel like I'm being shared something that is, is that yeah. was special to me. So therefore I'm sharing to them. And then now therefore it's special. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I'm saying this because I'm now learning that aspect and yeah. trying to put that in my in my dealings. So it's like seeing that I'm like, oh, this is maybe that's what needs to happen. It's just conversation. That is awesome. <laughs> hey, so I, I, I know. I know. See, you know, again, this whole the whole point of this was just to kind of like discuss and find you know the just to to brag and and have fun with it and i mean you know i, I when when i was asked to do the the spike thing it was just like you know there's try and get the nuggets that relate to the things that we're trying to like do here and i was just like okay and then and you know in the, in doing the first interview with laura and this one with you it's kind of just like i guess those nuggets are like well, when i'm thinking about the conversations it's like you know the the world has changed a lot. There's a lot of information. Uh, it can be overwhelming, but if we all work together, we'll be able to find and learn together and grow together. Because mm -hmm. you know, Laura's interview is about journalism and how you know the, how journalism is evolving and stuff. And your interview is you know about you know what you do and connection with this. And I the, you know doing this youth thing, it, it, uh, like it it sounds like it, it not only helps them. It's it's you're seeing things through again yeah. different lenses because you're working sure. with them yeah they def it definitely made me you know i still have to work on i guess like my own like you know i guess patience in some ways that's, yeah, that's <laughs> but um it's it definitely got me to think in a more like well-rounded view mm -hmm. of things and how people digest information yeah. and and because dealing with adults all the time too there's a certain flow there's a certain way and you and we're know, all jaded <laughs> and, and that too you know but i think and I, but i think too is it's 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 like it just forces you to really listen it yeah. forces in this type of work it forces you to really listen to understand the the subtleties of because you know everyone's so um sensitive not sensitive in a way that you know people are emotional but it's just like children are very very in tune with themselves yeah. it, it, that we don't take credit for and so being i think as honest as you can is the best thing because they they sense it they sense it when you're not being honest yeah yeah you know so being genuine is important genuine yeah. and and so again they'll still appreciate if you're coming to them in genuine even if they don't necessarily understand or agree yeah but i think that for me that's what i've learned through this process and and um you know i i hope i, I mean it, it makes me you know i try to be a better artist i know this conversation not necessarily turned into like an artist necessary conversation i think no, but it's definitely, i think i think it did i think part of the conversation is that being an artist because you know having those conversations about just like you know what's your writing process like what's the like yeah. you can have those and yeah. those are great but i think one of the fun parts of having known yes. you for as long as we have is that we also got this was also a way for us to catch up yeah. and through that just those stories 
I think it's important for artists, you know, you're you're because you're doing a lot, right? Like, yeah. but but you're able to manage it, and you're able to understand, and you're able to grow and learn through every different interaction. And and you know, I think I think one of the most important things you said was understanding how people consume information that's been different, and you've learned that through this experience. And yeah. I think you know, when whoever's listening to this, I, if they're a creative person, that it's important for them to realize, like, yes, talking to people in your circle and the, and you're all doing the same thing might limit you and limit the ideas you have on how you as a creative can reach people. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the you know part of the the, the other nugget of this conversation yeah. is like that's important. Yeah, that, that's true. those are things to consider. Um, because even for me, like, you know, talking to you, talking to Laura, talking to all my other friends, talking to anyone that's been a creative, I always learned so much. I mean, that there's the, one of the first interviews I did with you when I was at CJLO and you came on the mm, show. Yes. And we were talking and you were thanking me for having you. And I, I, I kept saying, like, no, thank you, because I don't have... <laughs> Like me, me yeah. just playing music is not as fun as like, you know, you being a musician and being open and honest about who you are and writing. And because yeah. I'm just a mouthpiece. I just get to sit here and press play. And in this case, at, say a few words and then let you discuss. But, you know, you're the one that's getting to I'm doing my part, hopefully. Yeah, of course. But, but I mean, I think the, my favorite part is. I, it, selfishly, because it's great for everyone to listen to this, but selfishly, I'm I'm getting to learn how to be better at doing this mm -hmm. podcasting, social media, and h interacting. And now I kind of want to. I'm going to find a group of youth and ask them, like, so, as the old man in the room, how do you consume a podcast? And hopefully, I'll learn from it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Um, I think one of the last things I wanted to ask you about yeah. was, I, I mean, uh. I know you have a lot of like there's 520 a.m., mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is one project. Uh, there's, you know, Princess Shayla. There's there's Sam I. Montola. There's there's a lot of so time management. That's probably the one that I, that I think is one of the last nuggets. Mm -hmm. How do you manage it all? Like, how do you? There's a lot of projects. No sleeping. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> Well, first, I, I, I think my first priority is Sam I Am, Montola. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, and that relates now uh, more with singing, mm. uh, with music. Um, I've always will be dancing. I think, like, since time, yeah. and it, since everyone who knows me knows I will, I'm a dancer yeah. you know, at heart. And I think I'm still here in the community, but um, Sam I Am, Montola, for me, is, is something that is just being an artist and... Um, one of the things that I've been wanting to is just expand more of my uh, musical um, talents mm -hmm. or um, like just dabbling, let's say, in learning how to produce or learning how yeah. to mix, learning how to record my own voice even. Like just little things that um, allow me to be able to create um, on the spot more. Mm -hmm. And if I have an idea just to try things out, not expecting, you know, it to be like released right away, but just like those things, um, I think has helped me, um, I guess, see, um, full, like see my idea in its full perspective. And, yeah. Like, what to I see want, it like, from really, beginning to end. To right? beginning yeah. to end. Um, and so Sam I Am has always been kind of, I guess, the first priority in terms of a name. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I know, like, I have a lot of different projects because I have a lot of interesting, well, I find interesting <laughs> ideas. Very interesting. Um, in my mind that I don't necessarily want it to have to be always associated with, um, to say Sam I Am, not that I'm trying to disconnect it. Yeah. But I think... Um, but there could be different aspects different of aspects, who you are, yeah. which is which it which it is. You know, yeah. like for example, five twenty in the morning is literally my the day the time I was born. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, dope. Okay, um, that's cool. And and just because I thought it was a nice ring to it, and it started off as a blog, it still is a blog. Mm -hmm. Um, but more now, as you said, more narrowed down to like kind of things that I find interesting and, and trying to archive like different parts of like, I guess now history mm -hmm. too, of like what's going on here in Montreal or even, you know, a little bit outside, but just also with, um, you know, black history and all these things with dance and music that I think, um, sometimes like you don't get a chance to really hear about. And I think it's nice to connect the dots. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of like my idea um, in that in that vein of how I'm using that kind of vehicle, um, Princess Shayla. I mean, it came out 
first as like Shayla because it's my middle name, one mm. of my middle names. And when I was starting whacking, I had the name Sam I Am, but I felt like it wasn't. It didn't feel whacking enough for me. I felt yeah. like Samayam was really my, like I was a hip hop dancer and, and it had a different ring to it. Mm. And I wanted to use something that was going to bring me this, this sort of personality that I needed. Mm. And so Shayla just came up and I, it stuck with me and I liked a lot. And so that's how Shayla, Princess Shayla came about. Um, Princess Shayla, because someone else added, which was my mentor. Um, and, oh, cool. I, and then I just kind of rang ran with it um but these are how names came about yeah, it wasn't yeah. something that like okay now i <laughs> yeah, yeah. i started this i'm gonna have five names no one's gonna <laughs> know who the hell any of these are and that's it yeah but yeah. you know that it's it's interesting how these names kind of came about but it's just all different aspects i guess of myself yeah um that it can just be a little bit more i guess focused hmm. um Oh, cool. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, so, yeah. like, you know, Princess Sheila has a certain tone to it. If yeah. people know who she is, for example, um, they still know it's me, but it's just, like, they know this is what Princess Sheila cool. is. I like that the idea of naming the aspects of you gave them life. Yeah, and, and like that's... It's like and that's also a very hip hop thing to do, right? A lot yeah. of, a lot of, I mean, all artists that are really about that hip hop culture is really, um, you know, using. They don't use their real names, right? True. They use these these kind of, um, I guess, alter egos that yeah. can kind of, you know, get them to, you know, be a little bit extraordinary in a, in a way that you know Samantha Hines is not, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. necessarily gonna have in their in her everyday life, you know, yeah. in that way. Still, everything is you, right? Everything is you. It's just something that I think we can use to like um allow ourselves to be you know and that's what i say too when i teach and all that stuff is like you know sometimes you just need that name that's gonna just yeah click in and make you feel this certain way that can bring you out of yourself you know yeah so yeah yeah this is how it all came about and this is through again years of just trying new things and then having it stick and be like you know what yeah and cool. organic that's the thing like everything you described come sounds like it comes organically yeah you can't yeah. for you can't force this no, this no, no, is no, not no. <laughs> yeah that's dope hey uh what's the last thing you'd want to tell people uh i will do i mean we'll talk, we'll talk about social media where people can find your stuff and for everything sure. but like what's one last thing that if you uh, um, there's a, f a few things. Um, as I said, my last project, um, which was a mixtape intro to Ingo, is um, pretty much out. It's on my Bandcamp. Um, it's also on my SoundCloud, Sam I Am Montola, M O N T O L L A. And this is where I started just playing around with like um, recording and mixing and, and even producing here and there. And um, I'm just really happy with that. And of course, Next project hopefully is for 2020, which is right now. Yeah. So definitely going through that. But um, there's also in two weeks on um, January 31st at Raphael Bar, um, I'm pretty much hosting um, a celebration. It's party time, 10 to 3. And I wanted to just to um, highlight and showcase like women who are in music, who are from the African diaspora or African continent, and just cool. like be present. And it's welcome to everyone. Um, again, it's definitely not exclusive, but just giving a space for people to to create and grow. Um, and yeah, there's things happening in the city. Um, again, I can speak of. Um, uh, Look out for again, like for example, Loop Sessions women who um, are part of a team again that is uh, Woman X that again is going to be doing a second event that's going to happen in March. So just look f yeah. out for these things. These are things that are happening in the community that's happening in the city. Um, there's so many things that are going on again. Just guys, Montreal honestly is like so you much. know so much nuggets and so much yeah. richness that you know it, it's 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 great how many people are doing things but yeah. these are the few things that i could think is immediately that's going on that if ever you're interested that's about creating music and about creating just a safe space and creating um these are the things that are happening Dope. in my little neighborhood so yeah. And where do people follow you on? I feel like if people just follow you on social media, they'll be able to keep up with all this stuff. Yes. Um, you know, Facebook, um, IG. So, again, Sam I Am. That's S-A-M-I-A-M. -S and Montola, M-O-N-T-O-L-L-A. And for sure, I'll be posting um, through my 
my pages. So definitely, I'm yes. gonna be. I, I will link to all of those. So if you guys are listening to this, you can just click on the description below or to the left or to the right. However you're listening to this, you'll find it. Um, thank you so much. Thank this you. This was awesome. I, I had so much fun talking with yes. you. Yes. Um, yeah. The guys, thank you so much for tuning into this one. This is another Not a Journalist with Sam I am Montola. Yes. And uh, that's it, guys. Peace. We'll be back soon. Peace. Guys, that was another one. Um, just to remind you guys, we are, well, I mean, Geektastic Sypha is not happening this Wednesday, January 29th, as you know. Uh, if you didn't know, I apologize to have to inform you like this at the end of the podcast. Uh, we uh, unfortunately were not able to do it this week, and that is my fault. But the boys are chomping at the bits to come back. We're really excited to get to get back to it and be more consistent. Uh, so that's going to be happening real soon. So just make sure to check out franklinarmstrong.com. And you can always check out all the podcasts on franklinarmstrong.com. You have... Geektastic Cypher, That's Canon, Running With Wolves, K and Them Podcast. K and Them, who was just nominated for an award, uh, Gala Dynasty, uh, for Podcast of the Year, which is amazing. We're also proud of her. Uh, we also have uh, M- The Morning Detour over at CKUT 90.3 on Fridays. Uh, we have uh, Urban Renewal Project, which comes out on Tuesday at 10 to midnight Pacific Standard Time. And uh, we have uh, Basic Bullshit podcast that's joining the collective and R and R podcasts that are joining the collective. Uh, all that's going to be up and added to the website soon. We're going to be having everyone featured on the website. Oh, and Queer FM, um, also hosted by DJ Denise. Um, so you guys can make sure to check out everything on FranklinArmstrong.com and stay connected, stay informed. We have a lot of great stuff that's going to be coming out soon. And uh, don't forget, if you guys are interested in coming to our game night at Boulevard Saint Laurent, 3910 Boulevard Saint Laurent, local legend, uh, they also added a menu. There's a lot of amazing, delicious uh, meal options that are going to be available that night, and you guys are invited to come through. Tickets are $10. You can get your tickets at franklinarmstrong.com slash events, or you can check us out on Eventbrite. Just look up Running With Wolves Game Night. That's it. Peace.